Apple has just released iOS 17.1. Here are all the new features and the biggest bug fixes. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here. And as I said, Apple has just released to all of you iOS 17.1. This is the first major milestone update to iOS 17, and Apple is bringing long promised new features and a ton of bug fixes. So let's go ahead and break it down. I'm gonna show you everything that is new in this update for your iPhone. The first new feature has been promised by Apple, but didn't make it into the original iOS 17 release. And that is a new feature for AirDrop. When you're airdropping a large file between two devices, it can take a while and you don't want to sit there with your phones sitting right next to each other. Well, with iOS 17.1, you can initiate that airdrop transfer and then just walk away. Go your separate ways and that update or that transfer will continue in the background over the internet. It's a great new feature and allow you to easily transfer those large files without sitting there and waiting for it to finish up. There's also another update to standby mode. I know a lot of you have been asking about this and Apple is delivering. With 17.1, there are new display options for the 14 Pro, 14 Pro Max, 15 Pro, and 15 Pro Max. Basically, all the iPhones that have an always-on display. Now, you can choose between automatic, 20 seconds, or never turning the screen off. If you leave it on never, your screen should stay on all the time, ensuring that you can always see the widgets that it's displaying. It's, it's very helpful. Moving on to Apple Music. Inside of the Apple Music app, Apple has changed things up. Now it's no longer loving a song, you can now favorite a song. But beyond just that change in nomenclature, Apple allows you to now favorite a song, an album, or a playlist. Once you've done that, you can actually filter now your entire library, only showing your favorited albums, songs, and playlists, or your entire library. It can be really cool. So maybe you have a bunch of like comedy albums in there. You don't favorite those. You can favorite other playlists and songs, then filter by favorited, then just listen to those. Or maybe you just want to download your favorited content and not download the rest. I love this. This is a, a huge update for the music app. Uh, going to customize playlist, Apple now has all this different artwork that you can apply to your album art. There are new backgrounds that you can apply, but you can also just do this in third-party apps. I've seen a bunch of different third-party apps that allow you to like create custom album art, but it is nice that Apple is giving you more options just directly inside of Apple Music. Finally, on the bottom of playlists, Apple will now have song suggestions. I love this. I have a couple playlists that I'm always adding songs to that I just love, and now I can see related songs based on what's in that playlist that I can quickly preview and then add to that playlist. On the lock screen, iOS 16 reinvigorated the lock screen, bringing widgets and all these cool effects. With iOS 17.1, Apple's adding a new option for when you have photos being shuffled. You no longer have to individually choose photos. You don't have to choose people or places either. You can actually choose a album. This is great. So put all the photos that you want on your lock screen into a dedicated album, then choose that album from your lock screen and it'll just rotate between all those photos throughout the day. If you have an iPhone with a dynamic island, which now includes a lot of new phones thanks to the iPhone 15 series, Apple will now show the flashlight in the dynamic island when you turn the flashlight on. So you turn it on from your lock screen or even turn it on in your pocket. When you pull out your phone and you look at it, you'll actually see a little glowing flashlight icon right there in the dynamic island. It's a good visual indicator considering your flashlight's on the back of your phone. You may not notice it. You're not going to look stupid just standing there looking at your phone with your flashlight on. Specifically for the new iPhones, Apple has a new optimization for that action button. Now your iPhone is able to detect when it is in your pocket. When it's in your pocket, it'll no longer allow the active action button to be pressed, essentially stopping it from inadvertently triggering whatever action you have tied to it when you don't need to. So it's in your pocket, it'll know that, and you can no longer use the action button. Once you pull it out of your pocket, action button will work as normal. This should cut down on people inadvertently pressing that button um, just because they're bumping it or have tight pants or anything like that. For HomeKit users, there's new Matter support for HomeKey. So if you have a home key enabled lock, now it can support matter. This is a big deal because of many locks that we were kind of waiting on like level, they have promised matter support and thread over matter, but they didn't want to do it because there was no home key support for matter locks. 
So this should allow a lot more locks to adopt both home key and Matter in the future. By the way, since we're talking about Matter, there was the recent release of the Matter 1.2 spec, which allows a bunch of new accessories. We can see robot vacuum cleaners, fridges, washing machines, dishwashers, uh, standalone fans and AC units, uh, all this stuff inside of the home app for the very first time. This is huge. I'm gonna have a lot more on this coming soon, but there's no word right now on whether or not iOS 17.1 includes support for Matter 1.2. We could be waiting until 17.2 early next year, uh, but right now it seems like this is a big update and I cannot wait to see what Apple and other device manufacturers do with the Matter 1.2 release. The wallet app in the EU can now show your bank status for supported banks. So you'll be able to see the balance of your checking account and your saving account directly in the wallet app. The EU has something called like the open banking standards and we don't have anything like that here in the US. So unfortunately this is going to be for supported banks in the EU. If you're in the US, Apple has partnered with Discover to bring similar functionality to the wallet application, but it might be a little while until we see anyone else come on board. Then we have a lot of bug fixes. Apple is introducing crash detection optimization for iPhone 14 and iPhone 15 users. It fixed a problem with the keyboard lagging at times. It fixed the perceived screen burning issues that was impacting certain phones. It brings back the ability to set custom ringtones and tones on your device and fixes an issue with screen time syncing throughout all of your devices. Apple has a lot more in this update too that it may not even be listing here because they're very small bug fixes. So hopefully iOS 17.1 performs great for you. It's been testing for quite some time. Outside of iOS 17.1, Apple's also released other software updates, including iPad OS 17.1. There's updates for Apple TV and HomePod. Uh, there's even one for Apple Watch Watch OS 10.1, which brings support for double tap if you have the Apple Watch Ultra 2 or Apple Watch Series 9. That's also a long awaited launch feature that is finally being delivered. So that's it. That is everything new in iOS 17.1. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU or on threads at Andrew Hera 941. Otherwise, stay tuned. Got a lot more videos coming your way.